Welcome back. This is part two of the dungeon generation tutorial. If you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend you go back and watch that one first because we're going to be starting uh, where we left off in part one, where we've already created the rooms, and we're going to be starting to talk about how to create the path through the dungeon. All right, let's get started. So in the previous video, we made our room generator that spawned the rooms and distributed them around using the physics engine. But now we need to connect these rooms together so that we have a path between them. Now to do this, we're going to use something called a minimum spanning tree. And that might sound complicated, but what it really means is that given a graph, which is a collection of points, it finds the minimum number of connections to visit all of them. So for example, if you have a few points then in a line like this, then the straight line is going to be the shortest path that connects all of them. So this is a minimum spanning tree of this graph of four nodes. But as soon as I add some other connections, you'll start to see that the path gets a little more convoluted. Right? And so by minimum spanning tree, what we mean is a spanning tree means it visits every single node. So everyone is connected. There's no nodes that aren't connected. And minimum means that the path lengths are kept to the minimum possible value. And so if each one of these points in the graph were to represent one of our rooms, then a minimum spanning tree is going to give us a path that goes through and visits every single room the algorithm we're going to be using, which you saw in that demo, is called Prim's algorithm. And you can look this up on Wikipedia. I'll include the link below if you want more of the details of where this comes from. It also has this nice animation of a demo of the algorithm as it runs, as it goes through the nodes and finds from whatever starting point, each for each node, it finds the next nearest node and just starts connecting them up. And you can see how it grows and finds its path through the whole graph. To store our data, we're going to use Godot's built-in A star node, which is designed to hold a graph with connections. So it's perfect for our use case here. All right, so let's get going. So starting with the code that we did in the previous version, which generates the room, we're going to add a variable called path that's going to hold our, this is going to hold our minimum spanning tree. So this is, this is going to be an A star pathfinding object and now in our call rooms section here where we go through and we after we've spread out all the rooms and put them in their places we go through and delete some of them to make it a little more sparse what we want to do is we want to collect a list of all of the room positions that we can pass to our minimum spanning tree algorithm so we're going to make a variable here called room positions it's just going to be an array to hold all of the room coordinates. And if we call the room, we don't want to put it in the list. But if we do call the room, then we're going to append the room position to that array. Now here's one little gotcha. The A star node that we use stores the positions of the nodes as vectors. And that's fine, except it uses vector threes. Because it's designed to be used in both 2D and 3D, it uses vector threes for all of its positions. That means we can't just insert the room's position, because that's going to be, in our case, a vector two. So we have to convert our vector two into a vector three, and we're just going to leave all of the z coordinates as zero. So we're going to insert a vector three of our room position.x. Go to the next line here our room position dot y comma zero. And so that's our 3D representation of our 2D vector. Now we have, we, we want to give this, I'm going to put a little um, delay in here. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to have it pause briefly to finish this room calculation and changing all the rooms to static before we calculate the MST or the positions might not be quite correct. 
but now we're ready to generate a minimum spanning tree connecting the rooms. And we'll do that by, and we'll store it in our path variable. We'll call a function find MST using those room positions. All right, so now it's time for the magic. So we're going to define that find MST function. And that's going to be given a list of nodes. So that's going to be the, the array that we're passing in is a list of nodes. And this is going to in, implement Prim's algorithm. And I'll add some more comments in here for the version that I upload, but I'm just going to talk through it now as we're typing it. So we're going to be returning an A star path. So we need to create a new A star object. And we need to add the first point to it. And the way we add a point to an, to an A star is each point gets a unique point ID and a vector 3. And so to get the available point IDs, we know 0 is available, but you can also use get available point ID, and it will guarantee to return you one that works. Because it doesn't matter what IDs they're assigned, they just have to be unique. And then what we want to add to it, here, let's do this. Oops. Let's do And here, let's do this. Let's zoom in here so that we can see more of the code. And we want to insert the first, we're just going to insert the first node from the array. So pop front, we'll take off the first node. So now our path has one node in it. And we're going to repeat this algorithm until uh, no more nodes remain. So we just want to keep going through our list of nodes until we've looked at them all. So we do that by saying while nodes, right? An array returns false if it's empty. So we're going to need a couple of variables here to track because we're trying to find, for each node we look at, we're trying to find the closest one. So the minimum distance is the closest one we've found so far. And that's going to start out at infinity. This is the minimum distance so far. And this one, then we're going to also store the position. This is the position of that node. And P is going to be our current position that we are looking at. So now we need to loop through all the points in the path. Okay, so we're going to go through a path. Remember our path at the beginning only has one node in it, so that's the one we're going to start with, but eventually we'll be adding more and more of them. And I'm going to convert this variable. So get points is going to get the ID. So we want to say get point position of that. And I'm just going to reuse the variable since I don't want to create another one for this. Then we need to loop through the remaining nodes in the, in the array. So we'll call this P2. We'll go through each of those. Now for each for each combination of these, we just have to see if it's closer than the minimum distance we've found so far. So if p1.distance2, p2, is less than the minimum distance we've found so far, then that becomes the minimum distance we've found so far. Uh, and then min p is going to be that position. And our current node becomes that one that we're looking at. Now when this loop finishes, 
when this outer loop finishes, we've gone through for the for each path and for each node in the path and found its next closest neighbor. So we can insert that into we can insert that into the path. So let's get the next available point ID so that we can insert it and add it to the path. So path.addPoint takes two arguments, n and min p. And then we need to make that connection. So path.connect points get closest point to p and n. So now we have the connection and we need to remove that node from the array because we've now added it. So nodes.erase that min p. And that's it. When this while loop ends, we will have visited every single node. They'll all be connected so we can return the path. And that is Prim's algorithm. All right, now we have a path. Our last step is going to be to draw it so that we can see it on the screen. So in our draw section here, we're just going to say if there's a path, then we want to go through each position in the path. We want to get each connection for that position. We want to connect the two positions. So let's dump those in some temporary variables. get the two positions and we'll do draw line. Draw line we need vector twos. Remember we're getting back vector three positions. So it's a vector two of just the x and y. Cp dot x and cp dot y. And then I'll go to the next line here. Color we'll do that uh, yellow and then we'll set a width and we'll use anti-aliasing because that will look cleaner and so now we should have if we run it our path get drawn okay so we just need to erase it when we reset right so over here in do, do, do input when we make the rooms or sorry, when we press space and we delete all of the rooms, we should also just set path to null. There we go. All right, so now we have our minimum spanning tree working and it's connect finding a connection for all the rooms. Now a couple things you might notice if we get here, let's get a nice twisty one. Yeah, so the path, like say this was the starting room and this was the ending room, right? You have a path with some branches, but it means if you were to go down this branch, you know, and explore, you're going to have to do a lot of backtracking to get back to the kind of main central path. And we'll talk about that um, maybe in a, in a future video. For now, the next step that we want to do is convert this now into a tile map so that each of these rooms will be an open area with walls and there will be these uh, lines will turn into corridors connecting the various rooms together so that we can walk around on them and that will be what we do in the next step thanks for watching